Hey everybody, it's Gil here with the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser. And in last week's episode, we showed you our trip down to New Orleans with my dad in town for a visit. It was a great time. We also drilled some holes in the coach house roof to see if we could have any rot or, um, or termite damage. This week, we're gonna actually start to cut the skins off of that fiberglass and also sand the boom. Check it out, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm going to attempt to clean up this roof and expose it so I can start to cut some pieces of the roof up. All right, got the rooftop cleared off here, at least of the paper. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull the boom off and see if I can get it off the boat myself here. All right, got the uh, boom off the top of the coach house. Just setting it right here in the yard for now. Uh, it's amazing how nice the finish looks on that. I mean, it's kind of hard to tell here. It looks pretty good. And there's this one little spot where the, the, the sail cover wasn't closed around. It's amazing difference. All right, so we're looking forward and I have a good portion right here of this cleared out. And pretty much this section of about the pen all the way up to about the screwdriver and over is going to come out. So you can't see it from here, but I have a line drawn all the way down that that'll give me a guide to start cutting. And the way I go ahead and cut this is I set the depth of the blade just to cut through the top layer of glass, but not all the way through the plywood as well. Um, I usually tip the saw blade forward holding up the guard. I start the blade and I pivot it down until the uh, blade penetrates the fiberglass. And then it's just a matter of uh, slowly moving forward. At that point you can let go of the guard and either hold with two hands or get in a position that's a little more comfortable and safe. Um, and then at this point it's just, you know, kind of ripping through all the different cuts. I ended up having to move this piece of wood just to be able to make my second cut, but we fast motion through these for us. All right, well, I started getting this cut, and you can kind of see underneath this support here. I still did two by four sitting there holding up the PVC. It just makes it a little easier, but I have the cut over here. You can see that. And then um, I went ahead and cut around this mizzen step. I can't tell how this mizzen step is attached right now, so I'm going to dig into that a little bit more, but I figured I could cut the glass either way while I'm up here cutting. And now I need to go right here along this uh, companion way as well. I've got to remove um, my bimini holder right here. And then it's repeating the process much like we did earlier. Um, I'm making a line, lifting up the guard, starting the saw, pivoting it down into, uh, into the fiberglass, and then I tried to clean up after myself as I went as well. So what I'm going to do here is I've now cut this section here. You can kind of see where I've got it cut. I started to pry up just this corner. Um, I'll back up the camera and I'll get this piece pulled off of here. And I have one over by the companionway and one under the mizzen step. Uh, I'm going to start uh, pulling some of these up just to see what we get here. Uh, still have one more piece of the roof I need to cut over by the forward hatch. But I figured I'd get started with this first. I am uh, just kind of going along here and prying this up. All right, we got that piece off of there, which is good, but I can see where the where the line was where they did this last time. I got the top skins cut, but as I cut this one over here, uh, forgive the board, I put it on top of it, I had to uh, make it a little bit longer than I initially thought. I went about another foot forward, and I haven't pulled the plywood off of that yet, so I've got to keep working on that. I think I'm going to use my oscillating cutter probably make this a little bit easier when I do that. Um, I also have this spot right up here behind that hatch and in front of the traveler, the main sheet traveler there. That one's going to be a little bit of a hassle. I'm going to take the traveler off for that. Well, I made decent progress today. I got some of the skins cut off. I still have more to do, so uh, I'll be back tomorrow. I'm ripping more. So Whitney got her driver's license this week. She's excited. We're excited too because it's less taxing and the depth's doing. That's awesome. But what that means is we also can leave the, route, leave the camper a little bit further. So we decided to go down and do a little work on the boat, stay the night on the boat, and get an early start. Um, instead, we ran down to New Orleans, hung out down in the French Quarter, heading to the boat now to do the work. 
Uh, let me make my way down the side of the boat here and show you what Deb's up to. Hey guys, it's Deb here. Today I'm on the boat helping Gil and I'm working on the mast step. There are four hidden screws that keeps us from getting this off and I'm having to peel out all this junky caulk stuff that's in there. Then I'm gonna re-sand this down, get it smooth, and then we're going to epoxy it before the mast goes off. Let's see what the mast step's looking like. Bungs are your friend, people. This shit is not. <laughs> and there is the screw. That's it. Let me guess, it's a flathead. Yep. Of course. So if we can't get it out, we'll cut it out. This one's a flathead too. Hey guys, we're here to try to do some work at the yard before the storm rolls in. And uh, as you can see back behind me, we're really running out of time before this massive storm rolls in. So today I'm working on the boom. It's slow going with with this creeping up on me quickly. But as you can see, back in here, I've kind of had to, I've got this section down and done uh, to the 120. I'm gonna be doing the one 220 here after I get this all down to one 120. So, alrighty, get back at it while I still have some rain. Not rain. Rolling in. And while Deb picks up her camera, I will say she made tremendous progress today uh, sanding the boom. Went ahead and did this in fast motion. She got a little bit comfortable on a stool and went to town with uh, a rough grit sandpaper, following it up by a mild sandpaper. Got about half the boom done this day, so really good progress. So this is the section I'm going to start working on here today. Uh, I'm going to clean up this cut edge. I'm going to use an oscillating tool like this to just trim it all down and also to work my way underneath the core and above the beam to cut these nails out. They are stuck in there good. Uh, I cut this section out here earlier in the week and that section right there I had to expand a little further because I also found some rot in that. Actually, not rot, termite damage. I believe that's as far from, uh, forward as it goes, but we will find out soon enough. All right, I finished cutting along the edges of this and now I'm gonna to attempt to sort of pry this out. We'll uh, see what happens. minutes but we got another piece out so good news is this is getting exposed we'll clean all this up whatever they adhered this down onto the beams with is pretty darn strong pretty darn strong okay so I've got this piece here cut and I'm now gonna start working on cutting to the side of the companion way it's a pretty good size hole in the roof right there <laughs> and uh, now I'm working on right there where you see the tool I feel like I'm cutting away my own little island here, but I should be all right. I'm over the mizzen step below. Miss, you're cutting that whole piece out that I just... Yes. We need it. I still need to get it. I'm not gonna be able to pull it up until I get this piece off of here. But I want to cut it deeper. Yeah, I think it's... Over on this side, it looks a little rotted under that mizzen step. So I want to pull the screws out, pull this piece off. We'll put new core down, re-glass it, and then this will get screwed down on top. But I got all the measurements to know exactly where to put this back. And then it already has the holes drilled and ready to go for the mask, which is where you'll put your coin right inside of here. There's going to be a couple of them. Oh, fake handy Andy had an accident. Yeah, but this has been great for cleaning out inside the screws. 
Where's Handy Andy, by the way? It's down there somewhere. Let's not break him. I need a, uh, I need a screwdriver that's wider at the bottom. The screw, the screw slots are huge. The most important question of today is what is Gilbert going to feed his wife? Because she's pretty hungry. When all else fails, improvise. <laughs> we need a bigger screwdriver. I don't think I'm going to use this on all of them, but I'll get a couple out today this way. The other one's too small. Yeah, well, I need something wider so why don't and you, thicker. So why don't you just use the vice grips and spin it around um, now that you have it up some? Because honestly, this works pretty well. This is probably easier than that. Sounds good. Besides, if I use the vice grips, it brings back horrible memories of taking 7,000 screws out of a deck. I want credit for my four that I took out. <laughs> you, took, you took more like 4,000 out. <laughs> Okay, so while Gil's getting ready, we're, we're getting ready to pack up for the day, but we cut out this section over here more, which Gil showed you earlier, and then we also cut this section out by the companion way. We reset the blade on the saw to cut these holes a little deeper to cut this section out, and hopefully this will be the extent of where we have the damage here. Earlier today, I sanded down the mast step. We will be reusing the same piece. It's the same dimension, size, everything that we need to work for our mast. So once we get this piece off, we took measurements so we know exactly where to place this back when the new pieces go in. Um, so, but as you saw in the video earlier of Gil sawing this down and pulling these up, these pieces are adhered pretty good. Not sure what adhesive they used. It's very sticky, gummy, um, yeah, but it's- I got some right here if you wanna show it. Let me zoom in over there. So we're thinking maybe a 4200, some sort of a, whatever it is, it adheres very well and it's a pain in the butthole to get up. Not quite the word Gil used, but still. All right, so that's it for today's work. Um, Gil will come up tomorrow, uh, depending on what I've got going on with the girls. I may or may not be here, but. He's gonna come up tomorrow and do some more work on the deck, uh, hopefully getting these pieces out so that we can continue and hopefully in the next week, get the new pieces put back in and then the yard can go through and do the fiberglass on top of it and start going further. As Deb said, I'm beat, I'm tired, ready to call it a day. We didn't even work that long today, which is disappointing, but for some reason, this is exhausting work. Hmm. I don't know how many people have one of these tools. It's a, um, a multi-variable speed, multi-function tool or an oscillating tool. Um, these things used to be like from fine and they were hundreds of dollars. Now you can get them at Harbor Freight for 19 bucks on sale. And I think with the case, this one was like 30 bucks. Uh, but what they do is there's a, a whole host of different blades you can use that are designed for, this one here is uh, metal or wood. Uh, this one is for wood or plastic. The nice thing is the newer ones actually have this little slot. You can just slide them right in there and then you tighten up your, uh, your lock nut there. But they work wonderfully. I even have one that is a diamond bit for sanding, for rough sanding, and it works great to get in crevices where you would have a hard time otherwise. So these things are really handy, um, well worth it. And I know a lot of people talk about Harbor Freight and the tools aren't great, and I wouldn't disagree. I probably wouldn't buy a precision tool with them but what I'm doing here isn't precision work. I'm cutting wood out that's gonna be fiberglassed and fared over later. Uh, this thing is a lifesaver. And I go into every one of these tool purchases at Harbor Freight with an understanding that if the thing dies, so be it. And I know a lot of you may not have a Harbor Freight in your area. You can get almost all of these on Amazon. I'll put links down below for some of the tools we use and that are the same prices as what you get at Harbor Freight. I just happen to have one close to me. So I run by there usually because I haven't planned ahead and I need it today. So, anyway. Good tool. <laughs> and Deb getting off. And sometimes it ain't so easy. Of course, this time it's going to be right in front of the pole today. Your Pepsi's right there, by the way. Oh. All right. What do you say, baby? Hey, the mystery mark. You ready that for was lunch? my graceful exit. Soon to be replaced with my beautiful Mark Rich stairs that we scored um, off a Facebook page. So those are actually over at Nick's getting modified. So no more crawling under a tarp.
Yeah. The springtime's here, the boat yard's starting to get full. They actually have one inside. I think I've talked about this in a previous video because there's my mast all wrapped up. Uh, we've got our boat sitting there. Have a couple here. These have been here a while. Not really anything going on with them that I can tell. But here's the amazing thing as we go up here and just look at all the additional boats out here in the yard. I'm always amazed at just how many boats Michael can get into this yard. It's not a giant yard, but man, he can, he can Tetris them in here. You can see the power boat behind it. Another sailboat right here. He's zigzagging around through here. Because that's not all, by the way. The sailboat's right here. We've got a boat out here that's getting uh, new masts put on it. This guy's getting some fabrication work done from the place next door. The same guy is going to do our yacht steps. You got this big old guy right here. Eh? This is a uh, 450, so I guess it's either a 45 or 50 footer. And then Pipe Dream over here, another one sitting in the yard. I mean, like I said, they, they get them tetris in here pretty good. And then this little building right here, this is Nick's fabrication and propeller shop. This is the guy that's going to be doing our yacht step mounts and all our stanchions. We haven't talked about this in the video, but we are going to have solid handrails rather than lifelines. Let's see if I can do this without taking a swim. Step over the line while looking at the gimbal. And now I know I need to go take Deb to lunch because she said, feed me, Seymour, feed me, which usually means she's hungry. And she's sitting in the truck, so she is ready to go to lunch. <laughs> in we go. Ah. Ready for lunch, baby? I'm ready for lunch. Here. Um, earlier, I sanded down the step mast, the step to the mast. Mast step. Mast step. <laughs> Clap. Take that out. down below so we'll look forward to seeing you later because i don't know what else to say hey everybody we hope you enjoyed this week's video if you did do us a favor give it a like and a thumbs up don't forget to click the subscribe button and that little bell notification so we get notified anytime there's new content also check it out we got a couple of videos up here we think you might enjoy i'll put those up on the screen in a second and in next week's episode you'll see us tear up a lot more of the core than we initially anticipated and we're starting to work on the companion way it's a little bit more work than anticipated but like i said it's going to be a great repair and i think there's a lot of good uh, good diy work here that uh, others might find interesting as well especially if you're embarking on a similar venture